here at Frogwares we are currently working on our brand new project, The Sinking City. It is an open world game and we want to create a vast and diverse map to explore. Our city, Oakmont, will have different districts, many many kilometers of streets and thousands of buildings. Usually it would take a lot of time and efforts to manually place every object on the map. At some point it would get too cumbersome, so we decided to shake things up a bit. Our software unit developed a very special tool in Unreal Engine 4. With it, we can create those vast and unique areas in just a few hours instead of months. Here is a quick rundown of how it works. First, we prepared hundreds of presets of different types of buildings, each fully customizable. These presets follow specific rules and architectural styles. Rich houses, decaying shacks, landmarks, commercial, destroyed or intact. The combination we can use to build our city are limitless. Then we create a city grid and decide which presets we want to use in our districts. For example, we want a residential area here, industrial over there, and this street is supposed to be flooded. Once we are done with the urban planning, we press a button and watch the magic happen. Our tool will generate the entire city in Unreal Engine 4 by itself. All the meticulous, often frustrating work will be done by the software. And we can modify our city anytime we want, add unique buildings and even name our streets. What's even better is when the Sinking City is out, we will release our tools as well. Players will be able to create their very own maps, characters, quests and scenarios. We will talk about that in our future video updates, so stay tuned. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. Existential horror that engulfs you upon realization that humanity is not the masters of this world, that there are entities far older, greater, lying dormant in the darkest corners of the earth. Lovecraft never explained much about them. To us, they are as powerful as they are indifferent. In the eyes of these cold and enormous beings, they are probably nothing more than tiny little roaches. But who can say if they perceive the world as we do? The poor souls who have ever stumbled upon them have either perished or ultimately gone insane. We are fascinated with Lovecraft's works of horror fiction, and we've always felt like this world would be a fantastic setting for a video game. Mysterious ancient beings that people can never comprehend, devastating natural cataclysms that mercilessly clash with human civilizations, destroying everything in their way. We are building our game on the same underlying themes that Lovecraft explores. Fear of the unknown, hopelessness and desolation. This is what the mysterious flood in our game represents. Nobody knows why it occurred, and at this point nobody has any hopes for help. People are scared of uncertainty. They realize that the flood is relentless, that it can easily devour the whole city and ruin their lives, and they are basically helpless. One thing they are quite sure of, that it's go only going to get worse. It kind of shows how insignificant and powerless people are in this world, and how callous the universe is. But here's a good question. At this point, Oakman seems to be beyond salvation and dozens of thousands have lost their lives in the fight against the ruthless disaster. But if it's so bad, why won't the citizens leave this ill-fated place? Why do newcomers continue to arrive? Why indeed? Is there something in the air that people feel addicted to? Or perhaps the city is seen as a beacon for those that desperately seek something? The newly arrived do not get a warm welcome from the locals. People in Oakmont are a very secluded, conservative society, and they are overzealous about their customs and traditions. The city is home to numerous secret societies and cults that worship their mysterious deities. The esoteric order of Dagon is a group of hybrids who fled to Auckland from Innsmouth and want to see the city destroyed by the sea. Or the Redemption Church, which worships a deity called the Black God of the Woods with a thousand yon. Thanks to his ambiguity, Lovecraft left a lot of room for those who want to expand on this work. Our goal is to fit in the Lovecraftian universe. Our game is the part of the worlds that Lovecraft and his followers created. Oakmont is located in the state of Massachusetts, not that far away from Arkham, Innsmouth, Dunwich and other gloomy towns that people know from books. Canonical events like the raid on Innsmouth are also canon for us. The great old ones and the old gods exist in our world. This means that the book readers will get to see familiar characters. In our game, the good old esoteric order of Dagon neighbors with the Oakmont St. Michael's Church of the Burning Bush, which worships the Holy Fire. We have hybrids of humans and apes, who are at war with hybrids of human and the Deep Ones. 
they have a bit of a racial feud going on. Okmont is a never-ending battlefield between many factions and powerful old families. All of them are trying to preserve their influence over the city. And yet, not the official government nor the supposedly powerful families can handle the calamitous circumstances. The situation is far beyond their reach now. The flood has awakened frightening creatures which now roam the streets of Okmont. Disturbing, twisted monsters driven by desire to rip and chomp and tear apart. You know what most people find really frightening? Not spiders, not gore, even though these things can be very repulsive. But most people are truly afraid of anything that looks like human, but is not quite human. There's a theory going on that when monsters look, act or move similar to how we do, but not close enough, it triggers fear and panic. So in our game we decided to give monsters certain humanoid features and see the result. But being scary is not the ultimate goal of the sinking city. Even though horror is a major part of the game, it's also about a person's behavior and motivation, how they change under extreme conditions, how fear and hopelessness can twist human nature to a ridiculous degree, cause people to do unimaginable things to survive, or perhaps because nothing stops them anymore. But that's a topic for another day. Initially, I wanted to make a more rectilinear city grid, which was and still is common in the US. But in our game, we eventually decided to opt for a more curvilinear, kind of like of living organism with branched street hierarchy. We want players to switch between main and secondary street, boulevards, alleys and so on, rather than going straight from point A to point B. Alkman has a history of growing and changing, from the 17th century to the 1920s. Lore says the city is built around a few major and rather supernatural sites, which also set the tone of our districts. The city grid varies from district to district. For example, we have a harbor area where our city was actually founded according to narration. But it's way more chaotic because the shacks and the area in the general were hastily built by the first settlers. By the contrast, we have a rich area that looks like a real American suburb. It has regular planning and traditional space organization. Augment is a mix of different architectural styles, which was formed through centuries. Of course, every student building needs to look like something from each respective period of time. To achieve that, we search for inspiration online, in books, newspapers, movies, everywhere we can, really. We work with a lot of different architectural styles. Here, for example, you can see a Romanesque-style building. And it's the interior. I'm still tweaking it and want to mix it with the Renaissance style and see how it looks. It's more about fun than realism. Very soon we will get to landmarks, unique buildings, which will also have their own attributes, their own style or height, for example. We want to use uh, them to help people find their way in Okmont without a map. So far we have a few thousand buildings in Okmont, hundreds of them can be entered and explored. We are still experimenting with our environment, interiors, public spaces and so on. We like realism to a degree, but it cannot stand in the way of exploration and fun. Is this street too long? Is this building too small? This area too bland? The most important factor here is how interesting it is to play the game, because ultimately we want to give players as much freedom and motivation as it is technically possible. So this is it for now, folks. In our next video update, we want to talk about the cultural aspect of Augment and how it mixes with Lovecraftian horrors. Sounds good? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you won't miss anything interesting, and I'll see you in the next one.